Lecture 4 talks about the respiratory system. Uh, it's relatively simple compared to um, the other three lectures that we have had so far. Uh, let's get started. So uh, the purpose of the respiratory system is basically to get oxygen from the environment all the way uh, to the tissues where you need them. Um, and in order for that to happen, the oxygen actually needs to cross several um, boundaries, several uh, layers before you can get it all the way to the tissue. So from the environment into the lungs, um, the, get ex the, the gas exchange that happens uh, there, we call that pulmonary ventilation. So basically pulmonary ventilation uh, is the act of uh, breathing in and uh, breathing out. Okay, so that's pulmonary, pulmonary, pulmonary ventilation. So when you breathe in, you take in oxygen from the environment, and when you breathe out, you are going to be exhaling carbon dioxide. Once the gas gets into your lung, the next barrier to cross is to um, go into your blood. And the exchange of gas between lungs and blood is what we call the external respiration. So this happens uh, basically as part of your uh, pulmonary um, circulation. Right, so you remember uh, when we talked about um, the cardiovascular system, there is the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. So in the pulmonary circuit, that's where you will uh, have the gas exchange between lungs and blood. And once you get the oxygen into the blood, um, then you will distribute it through the body and you will exchange it at the tissue level. Uh, and that is um, what we call internal respiration. So this would be part of your uh, systemic systemic circulation. So um, opposite is true for uh, carbon dioxide. So anytime you exchange um, oxygen, uh, uh, you would uh, take out carbon dioxide, uh, and it would travel all the way back to the um, to the to the lungs, where you will then um, exhale it. So we need oxygen uh, because of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is, of course, the chemical process that's needed uh, for energy production. So we use glucose and we react it with oxygen uh, and um, in the process we will produce carbon dioxide water uh, and we harness the energy from glucose to produce up to 36 ATP. So that's the reason why we need to breathe in oxygen and as a byproduct we will be breathing out carbon dioxide. Now your respiratory tract starts at the at the nose and it goes all the way to the ends of the uh, of the um, bronchios tree as we call it uh, and it's separated into upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract so basically uh, everything that's uh, above the trachea here uh, is considered as part of your upper respiratory tract when you had a have a upper respiratory tract infection like a cold or a, 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 a flu um, then you know um, you are going to recover from it um, relatively quickly maybe you know two weeks tops right uh, but if you have a lower respiratory tract infection uh, that tends to um, be take longer to recover so that includes things like bronchitis um, tuberculosis pneumonia um, those can take upwards of a, of a, of a month or, or a few months in some cases so um, we are going to be going through these structures and we're going to be looking at uh, characteristics uh, and functions of these uh, of these structures. So when you um, breathe uh, air into your nose, uh, um, it goes into the nasal cavity. The nasal cavity is actually quite big. Let me see if I have a picture of it. Yeah, right here. So this is the nose. And you know, if you pick your nose, you're only actually feeling uh, this portion of the nose. Okay. And uh, in fact, the nasal cavity is really really big all the way in so the nasal cavity has three basic functions right uh, it will warm the air that you breathe uh, it will moisten um, the air that you breathe and it will filter um, the air that you breathe so warms moistens and filters the air that you breathe and um, to do that um, the nasal cavity actually uh, is connected to uh, four pairs of sinuses so a sinus is basically uh, a, a space, a cavity uh, that is found uh, within your skull. Right? So each of these uh, bones that forms your skulls, they have different names. Uh, and the sinus are named 
uh, after um, the bones that they're found in. So for example, the frontal sinus is found within the frontal bone. Don't worry about names at this point. You're going to remember the names of the bone when we get to the uh, skeletal system. For now, just know that there are four pairs of sinuses. And there are short ducts that connect the sinuses to the nasal cavity. So when the air uh, goes into your nasal cavity, um, they would then be warmed up and moistened by these, um, uh, by these uh, 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 sinuses. Um, that's because lining the interior uh, of the sinus are mucous membranes, uh, and there are a lot of uh, blood vessels uh, going through these membr uh, mucous membranes. Um, and so they help moisten up the air and uh, uh, um, makes them warmer uh, before it goes into the lungs. Um, the filtering capability comes from, um, you know, you, you of course have uh, nose hair to do that, uh, and you also have uh, microscopic cilia in the nasal cavity that would help you uh, get rid of um, any, any um, uh, airborne uh, uh, dust particles, for example, or even microbes. So here we have a mid-sagittal section of your um, of your head. Uh, um, so let me just talk you through uh, this diagram. Um, you know what, actually we will uh, go to the study guide. I have uh, the same diagram here and uh, I'm gonna talk you through it um, and you know label it um, together as well. So here in uh, A uh, we have um, the nasal cavity. Um, you can write it down here but it's uh, a little bit easier for me if I just label it directly in the diagram. So A is the nasal nasal cavity. This is in your uh, workbook for lecture four. Okay, so nasal cavity um, again it filters the air, warms it up a little bit, and moistens it. So you can see there is the frontal sinus. So when you breathe air in, some of the air is going to go into frontal sinus, get warmed up, moistened, and then it's gonna it's gonna continue forward. Okay, same thing here. There's a sphenoid sinus here, right? And you have a total of four pairs of sinuses. Um, so um, the nasal cavity is separated by the mouth. Your mouth is uh, it's it's right here. Let me see if I can color that for you. Uh, your mouth is right here. This area it's not really showing up uh, here. There, that's better. So that's uh, that's your mouth here, right? And um, that here is your tongue, uh, and the mouth uh, is separated from the. A nasal cavity by um, by two bones. Okay, so there are two bones um, in the skull uh, that forms the heart palate. So the heart palate is uh, something you can feel if you push your tongue up. Now um, you feel something is hard on top of the roof of your mouth, right? So that is the heart palate. That's actually two uh, separate bones uh, called the maxilla and the palatine. We will learn more about them later in the bone unit. Uh, and if you continue f um, towards the back, then um, it feels uh, softer. Uh, and that would be the soft palate. And at the end of the soft palate, um, there is this uh, a dangling structure here. Um, this is what you will see in the mirror, right? When you open your mouth uh, in the mirror and say, ah, there's that thing that dangles at the back. That's this thing here. That's called a, called a uvula, okay, uvula. Uh, and that is an extension of your soft palate. So the function of the uvula is uh, basically to cover up this, this hole here uh, when you swallow. So the food is not gonna, you know, go up to your nose. Um, you probably might have experienced this when you were little. You try to swallow and talk and laugh at the same time, uh, and then food end up coming out of your nose, right? So that's when the uvula is not closed properly, uh, and that gives um, uh, keeps the um, allows this opening uh, to 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 let the food go into the wrong way, right? Um, so what else do we have here? Uh, like I said, this. Uh, is the tongue. I'm just going to label tongue. Okay. Now, um, the uh, back of the uh, throw here, okay, there is a common passageway for, uh, for food, for uh, liquid, for air that we breathe, um, and that's called the pharynx. Okay, so pharynx is essentially your throw. Okay, so it's really, really huge area here, and you can get into the pharynx through uh, 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 two ways, okay? Um, so if you're breathing something, then you're gonna go into the pharynx through uh, E here. So this opening that goes into the pharynx, that's called the nasal, nasopharynx. Okay, nasopharynx. And then um, if you are swallowing stuff, food and, and liquid, then you're gonna go into uh, the pharynx through this opening, and that would be the oral. Oropharynx. Okay, 
So two ways to go in. Okay. If you are uh, breathing in, if you're breathing in, let me choose a, a blue color here. If you're breathing in, then the air is going to go into the nasal cavity. It's going to go through the nasal pharynx into the pharynx. And then if it's air, then it's going to go to the airway at the front. So this is for air, right? Air. If you are um, ingesting food, if you're ingesting food, okay, then you will eat with your mouth and you will swallow. Um, that will go through the oral pharynx. And if it's food that you're swallowing, it will go to the esophagus at the back here. Okay, so uh, the pharynx is the common passageway for uh, air, for uh, food, and for water or, or any liquid that you drink. Okay, um, now there is a little flap here. This flap we'll talk more about later, but uh, that's called the epiglottis, and the epiglottis will cover up the uh, trachea when you swallow, so the food is not going to go down the wrong tube. Okay. Um, there is another thing here, right? Uh, G. G is pointing at the opening that goes into uh, the trachea. Okay, so that opening is called the laryngopharynx. Laryngopharynx. Okay, so um, the laryngopharynx will leads to the opening to your trachea. And the opening to your trachea is actually called the um, the glottis, the glottis. All right, so this here is the glottis. B is the glottis, G L O T T I S. So it's just the opening that leads into the um, the, the the larynx, which is C. And larynx is where you are going to have your vocal cord. Okay, the vocal cord allows you to speak, right? Um, another name for larynx is the voice box. Voice box. Okay, uh, and you know, in males there is the Adam's apple. It's uh, more prominent, right, um, uh, than than the female, uh, and that you know gives the uh, male a, a deeper voice. And after that, you would have the airway, which is shown here in D. Uh, that's the trachea. Okay. So, uh, in terms of you know where things go uh, for air, it will go through the nasal cavity, um, and then nasal pharynx is the opening that leads you into the pharynx, uh, which would then go through the laryngopharynx, which is how you exit the pharynx, uh, and it will go into go through the glottis, um, through the larynx, and through the trachea. So that's the pathway uh, for air, you know, going from the nose all the way to your to your windpipe, your trachea. Uh, and here, just one last thing uh, for food that you uh, swallow, you go into the oral cavity. Uh, 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 the epiglottis will seal off the trachea. So when you swallow, it's going to go through the uh, uh, esophagus right here, esophagus, which leads into your um, stomach. Okay, so esophagus. G-U-S, there. Okay, so that's the uh, labeling for now. Uh, let's go back to the PowerPoint slide. Um, so this basically is what I've been explaining to you. I'm, I'm going to read it to you one more time. Uh, the, um, the pharynx connects the nasal and the oral cavities to the larynx, which is where your voice box is, and it has three parts. The nasal pharynx, which is where the nasal cavity opens to the back, uh, to the soft palate, uh, and um, it's basically how air gets into the pharynx. Uh, we have the oral pharynx, which is how food goes into the pharynx, and lastly, we have the laryngolaryx uh, pharynx, which is where um, uh, the air will uh, exit the, the pharynx into the, uh, the glottis. And as I said, the uh, pharynx is the common passageway for food, water, and air. Uh, and you can see that, um, maybe as you go back here for a second, um, you can see at the back of the nasal cavity, that's where your adenoid tonsil is going to be. Uh, and here in the mouth, right, we have the lingual tonsil and the palatine tonsil. So, you know, this would survey the um, air that you breathe in, and these would survey the um, uh, things that you swallow. 
Okay, so after the um, the pharynx, you're going to go into the larynx, right? So the opening that leads into the larynx, as I mentioned, is called glottis. Uh, and the glottis uh, is going to be covered by the epiglottis uh, when you swallow. So here you can see uh, this here is basically your glottis. And in there, um, you're going to find your vocal cords. Um, the uh, uh, larynx is actually uh, supported and protected by various uh, uh, cartilage uh, and bones. So uh, here at the top, we have what's called the hyoid bone, uh, and that provides attachment sites for like uh, uh, muscles and ligaments. Uh, and over here, uh, this is what forms the Adam's apple, right? I mean, female has it too, it's just less uh, uh, prominent, and that's called a thyroid cartilage. Okay, um, and behind this would be uh, where you will find the, um, the the voice box, the larynx. Okay, and at the bottom here uh, we have the uh, cricoid cartilage, which is basically like the first ring um, that you will find in your trachea. So there are um, uh, are the cartilage and the bones associated with your uh, with your um, larynx. Uh, and maybe I should mention this this little flap you see here. That's actually the epiglottis epiglottis okay so if we go back here you can see um, that's the flap that we, we, we were able to see uh, in in this picture so uh, this is a, a, a x-ray that shows the location of the epiglottis um, the epiglottis actually doesn't really move um, some people think the epiglottis goes up and down uh, to cover the glottis like you know like the toilet seat or something uh, but it's not true okay the epiglottis for the most part is stationary um, it's just that when you swallow the larynx actually push up uh, against the up epiglottis uh, and that's how it's being sealed and you can feel this if you put your hands um, uh, around your neck uh, area uh, and, and you try to swallow you can actually feel the uh, ep um, the larynx pushes up against the epiglottis, uh, and again, that's how that, that's how it gets sealed. So within the larynx, that's where you will find your vocal cords, and vocal cords are um, thin sheets of elastic uh, ligaments, uh, and they are made up of skeletal muscles. Um, basically, me it means that you you can control them, right? Uh, and and of course, we can control the vocal cords. We can control when to talk. We can control um, the pitch of the sound that we make. Um, so um, they function very similar to uh, like the strings of a guitar, okay, or a violin. Um, if they are tighter, then you're gonna have a higher pitch. And you know, if they are um, uh, more loose. Uh, then you're gonna be able to create a, a, a lower lower pitch sound um, and in order for you to create sound you must be able to move air through the vocal cords okay so you can try this um, uh, quick demonstration okay you can close your mouth and pinch your nose and you try to hum a song okay you go ahead and, and, and give that a try um, and you will notice you you won't be able to do that because when you close off all the openings there is no way for you to move air through your vocal cords and without air moving through the vocal cords they're not going to be able to produce sound just like if you have a, a, a wind instrument if you have a flute or something if you don't blow air through the flute it's not going to make any sound right so similarly uh, if there's no air movement then uh, you won't be able to produce any sound so uh, when someone is choking for example uh, and 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 you ask them hey are you, are you choking and they verbally answer you that you know yes I'm choking then they're not really choking because uh, if you're choking it means something is uh, blocking your airways blocking your trachea nothing goes in nothing goes out that's why you can't breathe right and if not no air is coming out you won't be able to talk uh, either right so if someone is uh, uh, you know uh, coughing uh, 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 and uh, uh, when they're eating you just kind of leave them be that coughing usually will let them dislodge the the food however if they are actually choking you know they can't talk and then the universal uh, s sign of I'm choking is you know someone will put the hands around their neck right uh, and so you know if you are uh, a train responder then you might have to apply the handling maneuver uh, to help them dislodge the food right so by compressing in the abdomen you're trying to increase the pressure in the abdominal cavity uh, and hopefully that will help uh, dislodge the, the food uh, from their uh, airway uh, similarly if you um, if you are by yourself and you're choking um, and there's no one to help you do that then you might have to uh, apply a force against uh, uh, the back of a chair uh, to simulate um, that um, that motion okay now we will move on to the lower respiratory tract 
Here you can see uh, the larynx, right, uh, protected by the thyroid cartilage, uh, and the larynx will now connect to your trachea. Right? So your trachea, uh, if you take a cross section of the trachea, you can see the uh, lumen, the inside of the trachea is much bigger than that of the esophagus. Uh, and then um, it is actually protected by these uh, C-shaped cartilage. Okay, So uh, here is one of such cartilage. The cartilage doesn't go all the way around the trachea because you don't want to be constricting the esophagus. Uh, you want it to be able to expand when you swallow food. So you have um, maybe like 12, 15 rings um, uh, of these cartilage rings that um, uh, keeps the uh, trachea open. Okay? Uh, so you, know, you maintain a constant airflow um, to allow for, uh, for breathing. Now, in terms of the uh, lining of the uh, um, uh, trachea, um, there are these uh, cells that are called um, pseudostratified uh, ciliated columna. So I'm just going to show you the name first. Okay, pseudostratified ciliated columnas. So columna means they are rectangle in shape, and ciliated means they have cilia on them, right? Okay, so like that. Um, now, normally, uh, speaking, stratify means there are multiple layers of this stuff. Uh, and pseudo, pseudo here means, means fake. Okay, pseudo means fake. So even though it looks like it's multiple layers, but actually it's just a single layer. So if we take a look at this cartoon diagram here, and this is what it actually looks like under the microscope, um, you can see this appears to have uh, multiple layers. But if you were to trace the outline of the cell, you can see uh, each of the cell makes contact with uh, what's called the basement membrane. That's like the connecting point of the cells. So even though it looks like it's multiple layers, but there's only one layer. So that's why we call them pseudostratify. Uh, ciliated columnas. So you can see the cilia here, the hair cells, and here is another view with the um, uh, uh, higher power magnification. Uh, all these, uh, you know, carpet looking thing or sea anemone looking thing, uh, those are the cilia uh, and that's part of your physical barrier, right? Um, in addition to these uh, ciliated cells, you would also have um, these goblet cells. Okay, so there's goblet cells, there's a goblet cell here, 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 and the goblet cell's function is to secrete the mucus. So when it secretes the mucus, so there is going to be a bunch of mucus here. It's going to trap the bacteria. It's going to trap the dust particle, and the cilia is going to sweep this up towards your throat, uh, and then you can either spit it out or you know you can swallow it, uh, and it's going to go into your stomach and get digested. Uh, but either way, this is going to help clear um, the the trachea from uh, from a built up of mucus. I mean, you don't want mucus to built up uh, in your airway, okay? Number one, it causes obstruction. You're not, you're going to have like a, a hard time breathing. And number two, if it's stayed there, then, you know, bacteria can start to grow and colonize and it could give you like a, like a lung infection. So we, we, we don't want that. Now, sometimes uh, if uh, some people have a face trauma, um, there could be a lot of blood that's blocking uh, the, uh, the pharynx, okay? So there is a, uh, 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 a lot of um, uh, blood pooling here at the back and uh, the person will not be able to breathe through the mouth or the nose and in that case you might have to do a tracheostomy okay so in tracheostomy um, you would create an opening directly uh, 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 just below where the Adam's apple would be uh, and then uh, it would go directly um, into your trachea so now the person is going to be breathing through uh, this opening uh, instead of through their mouth and uh, and and, uh, and the uh, and the nose uh, and later on this could be removed uh, and in some people it will close uh, and in others it will not close uh, and the thing is you know if it doesn't close then you know you might have to install a valve there uh, to seal it off um, otherwise you won't be able to talk properly because your um, your vocal cords are up here and if there is an if there's a hole here uh, and you try to get air through the uh, vocal cords most of the air is going to escape uh, through this opening so you you need to close it up uh, before you can uh, talk properly uh, and you know if your body doesn't close it um, uh, as part of the wound healing then you might have to uh, install like um, uh, a valve there that will close anytime you uh, you speak after the trachea the air is gonna go into uh, the bronchus okay so your trachea will uh, go down uh, about you know 11 to uh, uh, 12 uh, centimeter and uh, then it's going to split 
and it's going to split into the uh, left and right uh, bronchi. Okay, so the singular is bronchus, plural is bronchi. Uh, and that will lead into the left and right lung uh, where it will continue to branch uh, into uh, uh, smaller branches. So here you can see that's the uh, uh, primary bronchus, that's the one that uh, branch off directly from your trachea and from the primary bronchus you would get secondary bronchus uh, and then you would get tertiary bronchus. So um, these bronchi are also going to be supported by uh, um, cartilage rings uh, but this time it will not be a c-shaped ring it would uh, be an, an entire full ring um, that's because there's nothing behind uh, the trachea uh, sorry there's nothing behind the um, the bronchus um, you know there's no esophagus behind them right so this time you can have a full uh, circle to surround them the only thing is as you continue to uh, split uh, further and further uh, into the lungs and every time you split the um, diameter actually gets smaller right so eventually it's going to be too too small for you to put a whole a ring around it so instead of having cartilage rings you're going to have cartilage plates so these are kind of like uh, uh, fragments of cartilage um, that uh, surrounds them uh, instead of having one uh, continuous uh, uh, ring uh, but the purpose is the same okay the purpose of these uh, cartilage rings or plates um, is to keep the airway open um, because when we exhale when we breathe out um, that's actually going to create negative pressure and if you don't have anything to prop them open um, they might collapse right uh, and uh, and so we, we want to keep them open uh, at all times eventually um, the airway uh, diameter will be so small that it is less than one millimeter in diameter uh, and that's when we uh, uh, call it bronchioles right? so eventually um, the bronchus we will split into secondary, tertiary, and then after more splitting, it will become the bronchioles. Uh, and the bronchioles are very small. Um, they completely lack uh, cartilage support, uh, uh, but they still have cilia in them uh, and the gallbladder cells that we talked about. Um, and because they don't have uh, cartilage in the bronchioles, uh, it's possible for them to collapse, uh, uh, especially during an asthma attack. So uh, if someone is having an asthma attack, the smooth muscle that regulates the uh, uh, bronchial diameter uh, is going to contract uh, and it will um, cause bronchiolar constriction um, and that's responsible for the characteristic wheezing that you hear when someone is having an asthma attack um, so you know the puffers that uh, asthmatic people use uh, is basically basically a bronchial dilator uh, uh, that will cause the smooth muscle to relax and open up the airway immediately so the person can breathe uh, normally again. And at the end of the bronchial, uh, it's going to lead into uh, an air pocket uh, called the alveolus, alveolus, and then if you have a bunch of them, uh, the plural is alveoli, and that's the site of gas exchange. Now, before we go and talk about the uh, alveoli, let's um, go to uh, the uh, workbook, and we're going to do some labeling first, okay? Um, so, you know, take out your workbook and uh, turn to this page. Um, I don't have the page number, unfortunately, but uh, this is the lecture four uh, study, uh, uh, study guide in the workbook. I'm sure you'll be able to um, locate that. So here, um, again, feel free to label it down here. Uh, I'm just going to do it up here. For um, this location here, this area, that is the nasal cavity. Nasal cavity. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, nasal cavity, the function is to uh, filter moisten and warm the air okay before it enters um, the rest of the respiratory tract uh, over here a it's referring to this area the back of the throat and that we know it's called the pharynx okay so pharynx is the common common passageway for food, liquid, and air. Okay, so um, the air would get in through the nasal pharynx, food and liquid would get in through the oral pharynx, and then you would exit through the laryngopharynx, 
Uh, and this area here, this entire area, that is your lyrics. So the lyrics uh, contains contains vocal cord. And the vocal cords, of course, allows us to, to talk. Um, and the opening uh, to the lyrics is called the uh, glottis, which is going to be covered by the epiglottis uh, when you are swallowing. Uh, next we have, we have this airway, right, the windpipe, uh, and the proper name for that is trachea, trachea. So trachea uh, is uh, going to be protected by C-shaped cartilage rings, uh, and the esophagus is behind it, it's not shown in this diagram. Um, it's going to have ciliated cells on the inside, uh, and there will also be goblet cells uh, for producing mucus. And when trachea goes down, it will uh, separate into uh, left and right uh, bronchi uh, that will then lead into the lungs. So here, uh, remember we are looking at the diagram from the front, so what's on the left on the page is actually the right side, uh, and so this is pointing at the at the right lung. Okay, so your right lung actually has three uh, three lobes to it, right? So we have a we have a superior lobe here, superior lobe. We have a middle lobe, middle lobe, and then you can see it right here. That is going to be the inferior lobe, inferior lobe. So three lobes on the right side. Uh, but on the on the left side, on the left lung, you are only going to have two lobes. So we have the superior lobe, superior lobe, and we will have we will have the inferior lobe. Okay, so uh, that's probably because we need to make some room for the heart. Right, the heart is going to be right here between the lungs, uh, slightly to the left side. Now, surrounding the lung is uh, is a membrane that we will talk more about later. Okay, so there is a membrane that goes around the lung. It's actually a double layer membrane. You probably remember um, this discussion uh, in the cardiovascular system. The heart also has a double layer membrane. Um, so this is very similar uh, to that. And this double layer membrane is called the pleura. The pleura. Okay. So there is the visceral pleura, which is touching touching the lung, and then there is the parietal pleura, which is outside of that. Uh, but we'll come back to it later. Last but not least, for this diagram, we also have the diaphragm here. Okay, so this is a muscle. Okay, the diaphragm. There we go. The diaphragm uh, helps you breathe. Okay. As you move the diaphragm up and down, as you can track it and relax it, uh, you are going to be able to breathe in and out. So we will talk about uh, the um, breathing mechanism later on. Okay, so there is a very simple um, uh, diagram for the respiratory tract. Uh, let's go to the next page. We're going to do another one. Uh, this is a more zoomed in view, if you would, uh, for the um, for the uh, for the um, for the respiratory tract. So starting up here, uh, this is the uh, thyroid cartilage. Thyroid cartilage, and uh, uh, it basically protects protects the um, larynx. So behind it would be your larynx. That's where you will find the vocal cord. Uh, below it, we have the cricoid cartilage. Cricoid cartilage, and that actually is considered as the uh, first ring of the of the trachea, and it actually extends all the way to the back to help support um, the uh, the larynx as well. Okay, so that's your cricoid cartilage. Um, below that is going to be your trachea right so again trachea is in front of your esophagus 
Uh, it's propped open by these cartilage rings that you see here, and they're C-shaped cartilage ring. So that's trachea. And the trachea is going to separate, is split into the right bronchus and the left bronchus. Okay. So this here is called the um, the the um, the right the right uh, main bronchus or primary bronchus. Uh, it's the same thing. And over here, this would be the left left main or primary bronchus. Okay. Uh, and they are also protected by cartilage rings. Uh, they also have cilia. They also have uh, goblet cells within them. Okay, so the primary bronchi is going to split into uh, secondary bronchi. Okay, so these darker color ones, they are secondary. And then uh, let me just keep coloring a few for you. From the secondary, they will continue to split. So now these ones, they are going to be the tertiary. Okay, tertiary. So uh, main bronchi or primary bronchi, and then these one would be the secondary, okay, secondary bronchi, bronchus, uh, and then the other one here, that would be the tertiary, tertiary bronchus. Okay, uh, and all these branching uh, occurs within the lung itself. Okay, it's called a bronchial tree. Uh, if you look at the picture upside down, right, then it actually looks like the branches of a tree. So eventually, what's going to happen is um, you, you can't really see it in this picture, but you know, if I were to zoom in, then you would have, you know, uh, the the bronchus here, and then it would keep on splitting uh, and splitting, and um, then you would replace the rings with the cartilage plates, but eventually, eventually, um, they will be really, really, really small. Okay, really, really small. So when they are really, really small, we call them uh, bronchioles. Right? Bronchioles have no cartilage surrounding them. Uh, they are susceptible to collapse um, during uh, asthma attack, for example. And the bronchioles are going to end in a in a in an air sac, and that air sac is the alveolus okay uh, and alveoli for plural okay so that's uh, what we've been talking about in the uh, in the powerpoint um, and finally just two last label here uh, this is the right lung right lung and uh, over here we have the uh, left lung again it's um, you know opposite because we're looking uh, at it from the front okay so that that is another uh, diagram.